Yael Groglas, you uh, play the misunderstood antagonist slash frozen fluid thief, uh, apparently from the finale, Petra Solano on uh, CW's hit series Jane the Virgin. Uh, what did you do to land this role? Because you seem like such a such a nice person. Did you like take out every actress that also auditioned for the role of Petra, or how, how did it come about? Are you asking like if I literally murdered everybody else? Yeah, li- or, or shipped away, or whatever Petra really would do. Uh, no, I uh, I was to be honest, I was surprised as well. <laughs> I was like, well, they have to have someone that you know. Uh, I don't know. I consider myself a nice person. <laughs> which is actually a funny thing because I've never before had to explain so much that I'm a nice person to people in the street. Like, no, really, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty nice. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the minute I walked in a room and it, you know, sometimes you have an audition and it's just this wonderful chemistry energy between you and the people there. And I walked in a room and there was Jenny Ehrman and Brad Silberling and it was just magic. And we played around and we had a great time. And, and that's when I really understood this character and Apparently, they agreed with me. <laughs> well, in, in Israel, you had a pretty successful uh, television career back there. What made you want to venture out into uh, the crazy Hollywood world? Well, I think it was kind of always a dream of mine, but I never actually thought um, that it would happen. <laughs> I, um, I came out here for the first time about three years ago, um, and I only had, I heard about this thing called pilot season, which I had, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how things worked here. Um, and I came out and, uh, and just kind of had one meeting, which led to more meetings and, and had some auditions. And, and then I booked my first American role, which was on another CW pilot called The Selection and uh, flew off to film that in Budapest. And I was a dream come true. I, I till this day, I can't believe that even happened. It was so, it was such a crazy dream for me. And then um, we filmed that, did, that didn't end up going forward. And um, then I did a show called Rain, another wonderful CW show. And uh, then I was back and forth between Toronto, Los Angeles and Israel for about a year. <laughs> and then uh, a year ago, I came back to LA and Jane the Virgin happened. Just the best thing that ever happened. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, let's talk a, a little bit about um, Petra herself. Uh, I mean, next to Next to Jane, probably, you have the trickiest role, in my opinion, on the show, having to skate between this kind of evil, manipulative character, but also making her really funny and really vulnerable and making the audience actually care about what she's doing and not mm-hmm. all out, just just hate her. How, 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 how do you juggle that? And is there, like, somebody that you may have, that you based Petra off, or was this just all instinctual? Well, I think when you have writing, like Jenny Ehrman's writing and her team of writers, it's it just makes it easy because the writing is so solid and so great that even though when you do play those funny moments, I think Petra, what makes it funny is that Petra doesn't think it's funny. Petra takes everything so incredibly seriously. I think that's what makes the show so funny is that the people aren't aware that they're living in a comedy. They think it's very serious. They think that, I mean, Petra thinks that an accidental hostage and being locked in a hotel room with her mother for a few episodes is terribly dramatic. (laughs) So she, she don't actually play the comedy, you know? And then um, I love the moments when Petra gets to be truly vulnerable. But I also love the moments when Petra gets to be um, sneaky because I feel like she is a good liar. And what I find the most intriguing is that you never kind of know what she's up to. So you don't play the lie. You just play the truth, even when she's lying, which makes it really creepy. <laughs> now, is, is, uh, is Petra a little bit... Um stressful to play because of of kind of the reaction from fans that you get i mean when you when you do anything bad to jane you know they're they're right down petra's throat but um also at the same or, or is it actually maybe more freeing to play because i would imagine that 98 percent of what petra does you probably would not do in yes. real life <laughs> true <laughs> um i probably wouldn't even get the chance to do i mean how often do you get to steal someone's sperm sample um <laughs> <That's very laughs> true. <laughs> I'm just happy I'm on a show where that can happen and it feels organic and seems like it would make sense the character would do that. Uh, I think it's actually more freeing. She's the first time that I've been playing um, a villain. She's very different than I am in real life. And, uh, and I feel like in a way it's freeing because it's the first time that I, the character doesn't care about what people think about her. She doesn't have to do things in order for people to like her because she doesn't care. She's the hero of her own story and she is 
doing whatever she thinks that is right for her and that will kind of um, ensure her future that she has in mind. She wants to live the life she wants to live. Um, so in that way, it's more freeing. It's also extremely exciting because there are no, no limits when you're playing a character like Petra. She can go extremely far. There is no kind of box that she lives in, like these are the limits of what she's ever going to do. No, she can do anything. And that's just, I mean, a gift for an actor to be able to play that kind of role. Now, did you and Jenny um, discuss at all Pet uh, Petra before, or you know, before the season had started about where she would go, what she would do? I mean, she's done some pretty, pretty uh, crazy things. I mean, she did have that one episode where, in self-defense, she became a killer. Um, yes. so, one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Just give me action. Did you, did you know about that coming up, or, or was that not something Jenny had pointed out at the beginning of the season? I know nothing. I know nothing that's coming up, ever. Every single table read, every week I try to get details out of Jenny, and she gives me nothing. <laughs> she keeps saying, oh, there's big stuff coming, but she won't say what. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been quite a ride. <laughs> now, um, let's talk... Uh, a little bit of uh, about awards here because we are an award website at Gold Derby. Um, Jane is on an unprecedented role, um, especially for a show coming from you know the the WB, UPN, C, CW kind of uh, network conglomerate. Um, you guys have won a People's Choice. You've been uh, you're an AFI winning show, a Peabody Award winning show, nominated for a Golden Globe for comedy series. The big win for Gina Rodriguez and, and lead actress in a comedy. Now you guys are a Critics Choice nominee or nominated uh, series for best comedy. Uh, Gina again landed a lead actress nomination. Jaime Camille came in with a supporting actor nomination. Uh, let's let's be a little bit honest here. Is this is this just a bit insane to you, or is it something that you always thought Jane could accomplish? No, you you have to understand. This is nuts for me on a personal note level because I only moved to the States nine months ago. <laughs> We're just like, what just happened this year? This is crazy. <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. I mean, I I think every one of those nominations is well deserved and, and Gina's win is incredibly well deserved. She's the most incredible person I know. <laughs> um, but it's still completely nuts that this is happening. This is crazy. This has been an insane year. Every time somebody mentions any kind of award or any kind of nomination, I'm knocking on wood or my head or whatever replacement I have. <laughs> Just because I'm so scared to even hope for these kind of things. We all knew that we were in love with this project from the moment I read the pilot um, and realized that this is a script that can make me laugh and cry within the same five minutes. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, it, I fell in love with it. I knew it was incredible. And when we filmed it, we knew we had something very special. But there's so many great projects out there. So you don't even, I don't know, I don't dare to really expect anything that crazy to happen, like this, this immense. And I, I think what's really good about um, our cast is that we all know how, I mean, we're all incredibly grateful. We all know how lucky we are. We know this isn't common and, and we just truly love our show. Now tell us a little bit about uh, about the Golden Globes. I, I had heard um, that when, since the lead actress in a comedy was right before comedy series, that you guys were still cheering so loudly that Gina won that you <laughs> may have missed the yes. actual. <laughs> That's true. We were the loudest table at the Golden Globes. We were getting like stink eyes from people around because we were we practically flipped. We nearly flipped over the table. We're very loud. <laughs> we were too happy. We we're like, wait, did they just? Did they just? Oh crap, we missed it. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. It was one of the best days of our lives. How was the actual just overall experience going? And, and you know, like you mentioned nine months ago, this, was, it, this wasn't even in, in the back of your head. And now you, you're sitting there at the Golden Globe surrounded by, you know, Meryl Streep and all these other crazy you know, people. I, still, I, don't, I don't even think that actually happened. <laughs> I'm still like, this is so strange to me. I know, being in one room with all the people you've looked up to from afar for your entire life and all, the, all of your idols basically in one room, I had decided ahead of time that I was gonna play it cool and failed. <laughs> it was just too exciting. I was running around trying to get a glimpse at everybody I admire and, and it was just totally starstruck. And I don't think that's something you ever get used to. You will never, I will never get used to just seeing Oprah. Like, that's not something I'll ever get used to. <laughs> Is there anybody anybody in particular that you got to meet that night that was, you know, maybe the, the coolest uh, interaction? 
Definitely, Benedict Cumberbatch. Definitely. He was the person I was looking forward to meeting. I'm a huge fan, and, and I got to meet him and take a picture with him. I, I was thrilled. That made my night. <laughs> now, um, uh, this year, um, uh, the Emmys are coming up, as you know, which is um, you know what, what we're what we're going to talk about here. Um, Jane is looking. Uh, Jane has made history uh, with the Golden Globes, with uh, at the CW, and with um, the Critics' Choice. And now she could uh, the show could be making the biggest stamp um, in history with the Emmy nominations coming up in in a couple of months. Um, now it's not just wishful thinking either. These are like there's actually like strong possibilities that a lot of these could happen. If you look at Gold Derby odds, experts are predicting um, some really big things for Jane the Virgin. You yourself would be competing in the supporting actress comedy category. And if we look at history, um, Vanessa Williams actually received three Emmy nominations for her portrayal of Wilhelmina Slater on Ugly Betty, which is a show based off a telenovela, just like Jane, and the role of an antagonist like Petra, but with not as much heart. I think she was a lot harsher than Petra is. Um, is the, is the, the Emmy buzz that's surrounding the show and, and you and, and Jane and Jaime and everybody else just kind of crazy to digest? It's, it's again, I'm scared to even think of the possibility. I'm, I'm scared to even go there in my mind. I don't want to get disappointed. I, um, I it, it would be a dream come true. <laughs> I mean, beyond anything. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you are nominated, you do have to select um, an episode to send to your voting peers um, that best represents your work through the season. Is there a particular episode that you have in mind? I know you just mentioned the one where Petra had to use self-defense, but this is a comedy category. Is there anything um, that pops out to you instantly uh, of one that you maybe felt was really great while you were shooting it or one that you saw back that you think uh, would be great for, uh, for people to get to know Petra? I think it would be hard for me to select one episode. Uh, no, I, I think I would probably try to find one that kind of has moments of Petra in all her different stages, where she has her vulnerable, it has her funny, it has her dramatic. I can't think of the number of an episode that it would be. I think I really like the episode. I know I specifically very much liked uh, the scene with Milos when he comes back and he kind of slams his hand on the table and Petra's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I, I like... I like that one. I thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> also, I, I think maybe the finale, maybe the finale kind of embodies uh, quite a few of those moments. It's my favorite episode, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, you were, Petra, Petra got um, pretty screwed there by, by Raphael. I know. Uh, leading her on and everything, and now she's getting him back. I mean, it, it was a great episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot happened. Just that, that ending <laughs> was <laughs> something else. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, go, you know, uh, with all of this attention and everything, and you had just, you've kind of touched on it, how has your life changed um, from last season when Jane was picked up to now you guys, two episodes in, were renewed for a second season, and all of this stuff that you had just mentioned has been going on. How has, has, has Yael's life changed in, in this process? Um, I wish I could say that I'm living the wild Hollywood lifestyle, but I'm not. I learned how to crochet. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much a home person. So I, uh, I'm usually at home with my friends and, and unless it's an event or something, then, then you really feel it. And obviously being recognized on the street. But my day-to-day -day life has not changed much because for me it's, it's very much about uh, going to work and doing my job and enjoying myself very much when I'm there. So that's, that's the main thing that's changed. I mean, I get to be on Jane the Virgin. <laughs> well, <Wow>. speaking <laughs> of, um, a lot of the reason that Jane um, and you are in these type of, uh, of, of big awards discussions and situations is because of uh, Jenny Ehrman as well as the cast that surrounds you. Can you tell us a little bit about how it is working with Jenny and um, the cast and if there are any kind of outlandish stories from set that you can share with us? Oh, wow. I feel like every day on set is a wild experience. Um, Jenny, I mean, we could not wish for a better showrunner ever. Uh, she's a dream come true. Not only is she just an incredibly wonderful person, and you know, we hang out at her house and watch. We watch the finale at her place with the writers and the cast, and 
we're really just one big family. And on a personal level, moving here um, would have been moving countries, moving across the world would have been very difficult if I if my cast wasn't actually my second family. Um, they're we're all extremely close. We have a group uh, chat going on. We're constantly making <laughs> each other laugh and sending each other weird videos and stuff. Um, it's it's a dream come true. And and the material that we work on. I mean, we're all we have. A, I feel like we have a very rare and and lucky combination that not only do we all love each other, cast, crew, everybody, uh, but we're also in love with the material we're working on. And and it feels like they trust us. You know what I mean? They trust the cast. They they don't. They give us uh, room to play and to bring our own ideas. And 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 that's really a dream come true. Well, um, we just want to thank you for uh, th for joining us and congratulations on on all the success that Jean has had and, and all the awards attention that's going on and uh, wish you the best of luck come uh, for you and the show coming up uh, with the Emmy nominations. Yes. And hope to. Uh, Every time you say that. <laughs> hope, 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 hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye.